Welcome to Uncle Lee's bedroom. I call it that because I learned from a direct descendant of Eliza Kempner that Eliza's bachelor son, Robert Lee Kempner, lived with her in the house, and this was his bedroom. When I bought the house, this room had a little bit of plaster damage over the fireplace, but overall, everything looked pretty good. One wall had been covered in bookcases by the last owner, and those needed to come down. The room had this one odd door that had been covered over from the back when the bathroom was added, kind of blocking that beautiful multi-light window on top. Otherwise, with some cleaning and painting, this room looked good to go. Boy, was I wrong. Um... It's hard, to, it's hard to talk without crying. I don't know what there is to say. Other than we had water, we had termites, we have rot. Above this fireplace is the third floor attic where I could see the chimney going up through the roof. Never seen a water leak there. I've seen a little bitty leak on the other chimney, but not on this one. Then tropical storm Nicholas came through, obviously blew something loose up there. And the next time it rained, water was just flooding in like Niagara Falls. Okay, it's really not my day. I've never seen this one before. That's why I came up here. That's what I came for. Today's new problem. This is the fireplace on the east wall. There's always been signs of old water damage, but no sign of an active leak up in the attic. But yesterday when it was raining hard, I went up to check everything and water was just gushing in around the fireplace up there. Everything was wet. Plaster soaked and destroyed. There's water all over the floor and on the fireplace. So today's project will be to remove the fireplace start removing this tile, get all this plaster off so it won't hold water, and start calling roofers. Okay, step one, the mantle's off. It was obviously an old leak because a previous patch was done with drywall tape and joint compound, and I could see that once I looked. Step two will be trying to get this tile off without breaking it. So look, this is interesting. There were two extra tiles tucked behind the mantle, so I've got a couple of spares if I break some. There's so much wrong with this fireplace and the other ones in this house. I'll save a lot of the fireplace detail for a later video. Look you here. Termites are another huge problem that deserve their own video, but just to show you what I've been facing, this is happening all over the house. Yeah, live, huh? Live ones. Fortunately or unfortunately, damaged plaster is relatively easy to take down. So with the flat shovel and just a little bit of time, most of the initial demolition got done. guys want to help, but this one's mine. The bad part about working over your head is that it all falls directly down into your mouth and into your face and your eyes. It's dirty. But wait, there's more. Come in here and look. Partway through the process, my sister came to visit and to see what was going on. Oh, that's different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the trim's plaster. See, there's a sample oh, over yeah. there. These are my things I have saved. But yeah, look. You can see the horse hair in it. Oh yeah, look at it. 
I just need to find a horse. Today we're going to do some more exploratory surgery. We're going to take this floor out over to the window and check these floor joists. They're pretty rotted here. They don't look too bad looking up from the dining room in this corner, but there's evidence of termite in the ceiling and it's really hard to see. So all this is going to come up. The floor had to be cut back far enough to slip new lumber into place, and then a pocket had to be made in the brick wall next to the existing floor joist to set that new lumber into. Here's a new one. This is some kind of metal bar embedded in the wall coming back into this floor joist. Thanks to the miracle of modern cell phone cameras, every time something gets cut open, I stick my arm in with my camera to get a look at what's going on deeper inside. Fortunately, this space looks pretty good and the termite damage is confined to right next to the outer wall. Once the wall pockets have been made, the new joist gets put into place. The end of the joist resting on the wall looks pretty bad, so it needs this repair to maintain structural integrity. And you can see that outline of an old termite tube where the termites had started moving further down the joist. It's a good thing we stopped them here. Due to their sturdiness, lag screws are used to fasten items that are subjected to huge forces. A pilot hole is drilled in the first board for the unthreaded section of the shank so it can turn freely. A smaller hole is drilled in the second board so that the threaded portion has something to grab onto and pull the two boards together as it's turned. If you make that second hole too big, the screw won't have anything to grab onto and it won't work properly. The screw needs to be sized to the thickness of the board you're trying to hold together. Here's a fun fact. Surgeons use the same principle to screw bones together. Lag bolts and lag screws do about the same job, but they're two different things. Bolts have nuts and a threaded shaft. The screw is nice to use when you can't get to the back side of the board to install the nut. A single quarter inch lag bolt can hold up to 13,000 pounds. On the other hand, a 1 8 inch lag screw can manage to hold up to 3,000 pounds. So these guys are pretty strong. We use both bolts and screws because of the part shortage and because of the different roles they play. I think there were seven joists in this section and five bolts or screws to each, so 35 in total. It took a while. It's a good thing we all get along because there wasn't much space to work with everybody doing their thing at the same time. It took three trips to the hardware store and almost a whole day to get this little section done. You need flexibility to twist into the right positions to get those holes drilled. We got the screws put in and Ricardo finished up the brick repair and it was on to the next task. The next project was removing that blocked door. I thought it was a shame that this beautiful multi-light upper window was covered with plywood. This house is very well constructed and it was difficult to even get the trim off to reach the window, especially since we were trying to save all the trim to reuse it. With the window removed, it was onto the fireplace. 
The next big project was some more exploration around the fireplace. I really needed to know how far down the termites had gotten and what kind of damage they might have done in this area. This looks like a vault of some type. It's hard to see, but it's humped. You can tell from the thickness of the concrete. But what I do know is that the edges are very rotted. So this floor is going to have to come out. So this is going to have to come out. Okay, so this is the edge of the fireplace. And this is not, not good. It was not supposed to do that. Now, all oh, this floor is going to have to come up. The question is how far back? Yeah, look at them in there. I was really glad I took out that part of the floor because with it out I could see that things were about to go from bad to worse in this area. That stuff that looks like dirt is actually a termite nest. They're all in there. We've finished with almost all the demo and structural work in here. So let me recap some of the things that we found that are interesting. One is this opening. It looked just like this one, but when we finished the demo, instead of it being a door, what I discovered was it was actually a window like we have down in the dining room where the window would have opened up into the ceiling. And they basically took that bottom window out and built a frame around it and hung doors because you can see up here where the pulley system would have been and this right here is where the chain and rope would have been and the weight would have hung inside this is the way they had an opening so that you could get to the weights if there was ever an issue. So before the porch was closed in, it would have had glass windows here, which would have let in a lot of that southern light, and you could open the windows up and walk out onto that porch. This is going to go back as just a solid wall, so we have a place to put a bed, and we'll reuse the windows that we took out to make an opening for the bathroom we're adding on, on the porch. This area we took out mainly because, as you saw in the demolition, there were live termites running up and down the fireplace and we needed to check the floor and make sure everything was sound. And sure enough, let me show you, this is just part of the termite nest that was down in this floor. It was sitting it was sitting down here right up against the fireplace. So unfortunately, these two wood supports are gone and we haven't replaced them yet because we're still pondering how to do it. It's got this big double beam here. So this doesn't actually hold much, but it does come up next to this brick arch so I'd like to preserve this if possible but the rest of the fireplace was too damaged and had to come down but when we took it down I thought these were interesting these are the cast iron they're very heavy panels that go inside the fireplace and line it and written on the back it says spare room over dining 
So they were purchased and installed and labeled as to where they went. Oh, that's damaging. It's damaging my fireplace, so I'm going to have to move that. Oh, oh hurry up. I got dirty. I got dirty. Um, and then the other neat thing we found is the tile was white in the fireplace, but in the very back, it was pink. So at some point, I think the fireplace tile was changed out. And then here you can see we finished, just like we have in other rooms, adding on new floor joist and just sistering them, which just means putting two together and using lag bolts staggered to hold them together. So this is right over the dining room window that was so bad where we had a termite problem coming up. So this room has had all the demolition it's going to have. We have to repair that one little spot and then we'll be ready to run wiring and figure out how to get AC in here. Oh, and I showed you the floor, didn't I? I think this is really neat. It's got three layers of floor. It's got a subfloor, tongue and groove, wide pine, and it's got a three inch tongue and groove pine that's set up on screeds, which are just these boards here that are nailed to the subfloor. And then on top of that, it has a thin three eighths inch tongue and groove floor. It's actually a tongue and groove that was put down. It's almost like a very thin, fancy decorative floor. Unfortunately, it's very damaged. It's been sanded. I don't know if I can save enough of it. But I've never seen anything like that before. I don't know how I missed this, but this area that we tore up, I was thinking this thin 3 8 tongue and groove was original to the house, but it's not. Clearly, now that we've swept, you can see where the floor underneath that had been finished at one time just around the edges and they used to do that to save money because they put a big carpet down in the middle so all that money all this big house and they cut corners and only finished part of the floor but that's good news for me because now i can feel good about having to take all this thin board off and just refinish the floor underneath and it will actually be original to the way the house was built. So this is this is kind of interesting. This bathroom was added in the 60s sometime. And you can see the different construction. It's got plaster walls, but instead of on wooden lath, it has this metal mesh. And when they trowel the plaster onto the wall, it oozes through between the mesh. And these are called keys and they actually hold the plaster on the other side solid. You can see the difference the old way it was done. Down here this is the dining room ceiling. Let me get where there's not so much dirt. But these are the wooden laths that are nailed up to the ceiling joist. And then the plaster is troweled on and it oozes up through the cracks between the boards and falls over and that's what holds the plaster to the ceiling. These are called keys. If the plaster deteriorates and these break off then that plaster becomes loose and you get failure and the ceiling can fall. But what we found here is these are all pretty solid. So there are a few places the ceilings are damaged from water but all in all, the keys look pretty good. That's it for now. It's time to kick back and rest a little bit. And I'm going to need that rest because there's a lot of work still to do in this house. And that work costs money. If you've enjoyed watching, please consider going to our website, LeeKempnerHouse.org, and making a donation. We're a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to restoring this amazing house. Another way to help is to just keep watching these videos. So be sure and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single episode. Likes and comments help other old house enthusiasts like you find us on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you back next time here at the Lee Kempner House in Galveston, Texas.